So, what do you know about hepatoid carcinomas? The easiest answer is it's a hepatocellular carcinoma outside the liver. Oh, but there is so much more than that. There are two papers in the Journal of Clinical Pathology published ahead of print. One of them is an original paper arguing that it is genetically unique and there is an excess number of NTRK gene alterations in hepatoid carcinomas compared to gastric carcinomas overall. But then there's an editorial written by yours truly and Dr. Paul that puts this paper in context, talks about the variants of hepatoid carcinoma, talks about what makes them genetically unique, and suggestions of how we diagnose them histologically, particularly the variants of hepatoid carcinoma. So tighten your seatbelts. This is going to be a quick ride. So this is the variant that most of us recognize as hepatoid carcinoma. This looks like a hepatocellular carcinoma. Why does it look like a hepatocellular carcinoma? Polygonal cell, round nuclei, big prominent nucleoli, and most importantly, there you go, bile. This is the second variant of hepatoid carcinoma, and whether this is a variant of hepatoid carcinoma or not is an open question. This does not look like a hepatocellular carcinoma. In fact, it looks more like an adenocarcinoma. But unique to this tumor is the vacuoles. These are subnuclear vacuoles. These are beneath, closer to the basement membrane than the luminal aspect, and hence subnuclear vacuoles. These stain for all of the markers of hepatocellular carcinoma, including cell L4. Hepatocellular carcinomas do not stain for cell L4, and hence you can distinguish between hepatoid carcinomas and hepatocellular carcinomas. Now, this is the third variant of hepatoid carcinoma. And again, whether this is, should be classified as a hepatoid carcinoma or not is an open question. This is essentially an adenocarcinoma. It lacks features of the first type of hepatoid carcinoma that looks like an HCC. It also lacks features of the entroblastic type adenocarcinoma. It looks like a conventional adenocarcinoma. And the only thing unique about it is that it stains for markers of hepatocellular differentiation. This particular tumor was an adenocarcinoma in the pancreas with all of the markers of hepatocellular differentiation, including glipican 3 albumin, et cetera, et cetera. So we recognize three variants of hepatoid carcinoma. The first is an adenocarcinoma with entroblastic markers. These are the entroblastic markers. The second type is adenocarcinoma with entroblastic differentiation. So they show those subnuclear vacuoles in addition to markers such as GPC3, glipican 3 cell L4, and albumin. And the third type is an HCC-like that essentially looks like hepatocellular carcinoma, except that it shows expression of cell L4. There are some prognostic difference, differences between these various types. Well, you may have tumors that are purely AED or HCC-like. Not uncommonly, you'll see air tumors with features of HCC-like. Not uncommonly, you'll see air tumors with features of both AED and HCC-like hepatoid carcinoma. So these are our proposed criteria for our diagnosis of hepatoid carcinoma, the three variants. And one of the suggestions we make that there be at least two markers of hepatocellular differentiation, one of which could be cell L4, and they be present in at least 10% of the cells. This is not written in stone. This is a suggestion that we make in our editorial. Well, none of this would mean very much unless there were targetable genetic alterations that were unique to gastric adenocarcinoma with entroblastic differentiation. And it is known that HER2 is more often, that HER2 is more often amplified in gastric adenocarcinoma, so enteroblastic differentiation. But key to this new study is that NTRK fusions and alterations are also more common in gastric adenocarcinoma with enteroblastic differentiation, and so is amplification of PDL1. So now we have three unique genetic targets for hepatoid carcinomas, which is why we need to recognize these tumors. Mm -hmm.